So the other day, I go to open up my my iTunes, my my Apple Podcast app on my iPhone. I needed to check one of my recent podcasts, and it was gone. My podcasts were gone. Apple just took them down. I mean, somebody, the way it works is somebody just calls up Apple. They send Apple a message saying, hey, Colin Flaherty's a bad person. He's documenting black violence wildly out of proportion. And then he even goes around telling everybody that reporters and public officials and lots of other people are in denial, deceit, and delusion about it. And since democracy dies in darkness, we cannot have Colin Flaherty going around saying bad things about reporters. How they how they completely screw up stories on racial violence. I mean, this, this morning I opened up the paper, I opened up my web, and there's a big big seminar at Yale University next couple of days at the dance show that's memorializing all the violence visited upon black people. Have you ever been to where Yale University is located in Connecticut? That is a dark and dangerous, dirty city. Every single person that goes to Yale, every single teacher, professor, medical student, medical professor, they know that. We've done tons of stories connected to Yale University. Black on white violence, black on Asian. Tons of black on Asian violence. Lots of Asian people run, wandering around the campus, on and off the campus. They are targets. And yet somebody at Yale, and lots of people at Yale look at that and go, you know what? It's really, you know, we really got to do a story about how black people are victims of white violence. Yeah, that's, yeah, we got to do that. That's how sick they are. That's how twisted they are. Everything up is down, down is up. Black is white, white is black. That's Yale University. That's the people at iTunes. And so we get you off. Know, so if you watch these videos, you know that. I know that, you know that, we know that, but this is how we are fighting that. We're fighting that by we're staying the course. We're, I'm going to fight. You know, there's still lots of places to get my podcast, by the way. I, I now get my podcast at iHeartRadio, or you can get them at Stitcher. Lots and lots of places, podcast directories, where you just go in and you enter my name, Colin Flaherty, White Girl, Bleed a Lot Podcast, and bingo, bango, bungo, you subscribe, and it'll come whenever I release them. I'm going to start doing more podcasts. But, but this but this is our life. Our life is fighting this, resisting this, drawing attention to the greatest lie of our generation. And every time you feel like stopping, you probably feel like stopping watching these the way I feel like stop making them sometimes. We come across a batch of stories like this sent to me in just one day. I mean, there's probably another half dozen out there. I just haven't had time to get to. Last couple of days, people send me these things. Black on white murder. The wife of murdered pawn shop owner Brandon McCann spoke with THV 11 only after the murder suspects appear in public. They had their first court dates this morning in Jefferson County. THV 11's Erica Ferrando was in the courtroom today. Daryl Strickland and Rodney Henry, both 21 years old from Camden, are being held without bond in the Jefferson County Jail. Today, Brandon McCann's family saw them face to face for their first court appearance. It was very hard to see them in that room, but other, um, it, it was more mad than sad. Um, but in a way, just to see the small two human beings that took my husband's life is just ridiculous. It's a, a life for nothing. Sitting in the front row of the courtroom, Miranda McGann watched as the two men police arrested for killing her husband faced the judge where no bond was set. That's exactly what we wanted, and I praise God every day. Thank you. And Brandon, we're, we're praying for you every day, baby, and we love you. Love you. Brandon McCann was shot and killed November 12th while working in the Pine Bluff pawn shop he owned. After allegedly killing McCann, Daryl Strickland and Rodney Henry are accused of robbing a Pine Bluff gas station an hour later. I would just like to thank um, everybody possible to bring this case closed. Um, this happened really fast. Strickland admitted involvement in the murder. He told detectives their intention was to rob each location for cash. Henry denied involvement to detectives. Here's a story somebody sent me a, a, a day or so ago going, saying, Colin, how did we miss this one? Black guy goes into a gas station in Jeffersonville, Kentucky, kills the owner. Bing, bam, boom. Who gives a damn? This happened a couple weeks ago near York. 
Pennsylvania. Guy goes into the gas station, robbed it, killed somebody. He didn't feel like leaving witnesses. What's up, my brother, Mark Ellis? Why'd you kill that guy, Mark Ellis? Why'd you kill Sonny Arnott? He was just a guy trying to make a living. Got up every morning, went to work, paid his bills. Took care of his family. Now he's dead. And you're not. That doesn't make any sense to me. That's why we're going to keep doing these videos. Okay, here's one just happened in Cleveland. Store clerk shot to death in shootout at liquor store in Cleveland's Glenville neighborhood. Okay, this is what we call East Cleveland. This is the black part of town. This is Indian country. No man's land. No go zone. Especially if you're white. Especially if you are a business owner. Whenever I think of this part of Cleveland, I think of that young, the, 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 the 40-something-year-old couple. They owned a car dealership, a small car dealership. One of these places that, you know, it looks like a gas station, but it was an old gas station. They converted it to have maybe 15, 20, 25 cars on the lot. They started calling the cops going, hey, the, our, we're under attack here every day. We are under attack. Cops didn't do anything. The news people came out. The lady goes, listen, we're under attack. It's like, you know, they were like a block or two from the formal the formal boundary of East Cleveland. She's going, we're under attack. They won't do anything. We're, we're in danger here. A couple weeks later, even before that TV station had a chance to air that clip, a couple of fellas came in, killed them, stole a car. That's East Cleveland. If you go to Cleveland... Talk to people about Cleveland and their town, which I did in, during the Republican National Convention. Everybody likes it. They like it up there. They're very excited about Cleveland. But then if you go, hey, what about all the argy-bargy over in East Cleveland? They go, oh, no, that's not Cleveland. No, that's not Cleveland. What are you talking about, Colin? It's not Cleveland. That has nothing to do with us. The denial, deceit, and delusion runs deep among the boosters. Okay, here's another one. Kelso murder suspects. A couple of fellas shot this chick. I mean, you, you think you think if you knew more details about what actually happened, how it happened, it happened recently. Do you think if you knew more about it, that would help you understand it? Same with this one. Police release new surveillance image of one of the men sought in the killing of B. Pam's food market worker, Stacy Childress. Second verse, same as the first. Tenth verse, same as the first. Here's a story out of Rio Linda, which I think is in California. This fella uh, got all pissed off at an 85-year-old man who parked too close to him. So he went up and punched him in the face. He got 10 years. 10 years. That's all he got. I don't even think they charged him with murder. I think they charged him with something like, you know, assaulting a, assaulting a person over 65. Punched in the face, the guy falls down, breaks his head, dies. 10 years. Wow. Why don't we just finish up with this one? You know, for no other reason, it's not like... The, 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 it's not like we're finished with the stories. It's just like, no, I'm kind of just finished with them for now. Because when I go back to my email later on this afternoon, we're going to have a ton more of these. So at some point, we just have to stop and say, hey, let's just stop here. Four men are charged in the murder of a store clerk in southwest Houston. Johnson, just one of four suspects accused of killing the 66-year-old clerk at Sonny's Food Mart last weekend. Earlier this afternoon, three other suspects tied to the same crime made their first court appearances. Eyewitness News reporter Marla Carter is following this still developing story and tells us that these suspects may also be tied to other robberies. Hafiz Qureshi was a father of five, a grandfather, and beloved in his community. And so now people at Apple, they want to take my iTunes podcast down, which they did, which you can still get lots of other places. They think, you know, they think that's, 
That's going to help if we stop calling attention to this Holocaust out there. And so this is kind of a reminder for you how we, what role you play in this whole process. This is a reminder for you if you are in a position to like these, share these, tell your friends about them, send them an email. That's what you have to do. Get on my email list. Go to colinflaherty.com and sign up for my email list. You'll see how to do it when you get there. There are people, no matter what else happens, if we are connected through email, we can stay connected. But I mean, one day somebody in Apple just snaps your fingers and the podcast is gone. I'd like to think all of our other stuff is secure, but that's not the way this world is working now. If this stuff's important to you, if exposing the greatest lie of our generation is important to you, get over there, sign up for my email. Sign up for the podcast. Drop a few pennies in my PayPal cup. Please, sir. I want some more. You know, they're not mad at us because we're wrong. Good. How, how, Lord, how easy would it be to show I'm wrong? This would be the easiest channel on the planet to shut down with facts if they existed. Here, Colin. Here's five videos, here's five stories in the last year of people, uh, uh, white guys going into convenience stores and killing the clerks in there. Yeah, Colin. See, white people do it too, Colin. What? We never get that though, do we? We never get that. Today, somebody is, you know, lots and lots of trolls, their favorite thing to do is to send stories. And I always know what the stories they're going to send before they send them to me. You go, Colin, what about this? I look at the story. It's 1919. Yeah, 100 years old story. What about that, Colin? You said this doesn't happen. 1919. And it's all part of some divine retribution for something that may or may not have happened in 1919. And the weird thing is, the people, same people who say there's nothing happening today, there is no black on white violence today, there is no tsunami of black violence and white denial today. The same people who say that, they're the same people who are writing articles about what happened in 1919 or 1944 or 1955. And so we, you know, we re- it's really hard to find an honest broker for any of this information, historical information. Because he's telling the truth about history It's the same as telling the truth about the present. If you do it the wrong way, you're going to get a lot of black kids angry. 